What is going on everyone? I'm in Old Town, San Diego, California. This is one of the most historic neighborhoods in the entire state of California. An old western town that is well over 150 years old. And there's a lot of fascinating historical spots to see here in Old Town, San Diego. But there's one place on my mind today. And I'll show you here in a second. This is the reason I came to Old Town San Diego. Behind me is the notorious Whaley House. That's right, the Whaley House often ranks towards the top of everyone's list as the most haunted place in North America. It was built in 1856, and the Whaley family, Thomas Whaley and his wife Anna, lived in this home and raised their family for um, on and off through much of the late 1800s, much of the, of the late 19th century. And this place is supposed to be incredibly haunted. Some say it's spirits of the family members that still haunt this place. Uh, another weird fact about the Whaley House is, you see this yard right next to me? That used to be a gallows. In the mid 1800s, they actually hanged criminals here on this property. And then Thomas Whaley decided to build his home there in 1856. Why? I have no idea. Maybe the land was cheap but he built his home on top of what used to be a gallows. So it could be the spirits of the criminals that were hanged back in the old Wild West days. It could be spirits of the family still hanging around the house, because it is a beautiful house, I must say so. And it's got a lot of rich history here in San Diego as well. Um, so follow me, I'm gonna tour the Whaley House today. This is a day tour. And I wanna add, I've been here before. I was here actually 11 years ago, back in 2012, my first time visiting here, I had one of the most profound paranormal experiences of my life. In fact, I was in the courtroom. There's a courtroom attached to this house and a woman whispered at me. I heard a disembodied voice from across the courtroom. It said something like, Sue. I know I sound crazy, but I heard it clear as day. It wasn't a vent. It came from the very corner of the room. And it was a woman. I was by myself in the room taking pictures. I can show you some pictures here of that day back in 2012. Didn't capture anything, didn't see anything, but heard a disembodied voice of a woman whisper at me here inside the Whaley House. So I'm back again today to maybe uncover some more paranormal truth. Who knows, maybe I'll have another encounter or maybe it'll just be kind of a quiet day and we'll learn the history of the Whaley House and its significance here in Old Town San Diego. I also want to add, I did do a night tour last night. Now, the night tour was incredible. I highly recommend it if you're ever in Old Town. I didn't have any weird feelings last night, didn't see anything, didn't hear anything, but I did have something weird happen to my camera. I had an error come up. My SD card got corrupted while I was filming in the theater room upstairs. My camera stopped working. I've never had this happen before. You see that error sign? I've just tried two different SD cards and it won't work. This has never happened before in my entire time filming until now. And I tried taking out the SD card. I, I tried to reformat it. I put in another card and the error sign continued until I walked outside and changed the battery. And now my camera's working fine. So I'm not saying that's a paranormal thing, but it's a very strange timing for that. I've never in the three years I've owned this camera and filmed with it had an SD card error come up ever. And not just one SD card, but two SD cards in a row. And it happened while I was in the middle of the nightly ghost tour here at the Whaley House. So who knows if that was paranormal or not. But anyway, join me today as I walk and tour and explore one of the most famous haunted places in all of North America, the, the infamous Whaley House. Loving the sign they have painted on the side of this house. And before I walk in, I just wanted to talk to the architecture. This house was designed and began construction in 1856 here in Old Town, San Diego. This is the original San Diego, for lack of better words. This is where the city of San Diego got its start here in Old Town. 
and Thomas Whaley moved here from New York City, tried to make it rich during the gold rush days in the 1840s. And he ended up designing this home and starting construction on it in 1856. He and his wife moved in, Anna was his wife's name, in 1857. And they began raising a family here in this home. Now, one interesting thing to note is that this property right here used to be a gallows. They used to try and hang criminals right here where the house now stands. And this wasn't a surprise to Thomas Whaley at the time because he actually witnessed some of these hangings himself. He was present during a few of these. So I don't know, I'm assuming the land must have been cheap. And that's why he decided to, to purchase this and build the very home he would raise his family in. But I can tell you one thing, if I ever build a house someday, I, I will make, make sure that the very ground I'm building my home on is, does not have a dark history or, or even a place of execution. That is insane, absolutely insane. Kind of funny, this depressing Beethoven song, Moonlight Sonata, it's kind of a hauntingly beautiful, yet kind of a macabre song is playing while I'm walking around the yard of the Whaley House. Coincidence? I don't know. Now Thomas and Anna Whaley actually moved to San Francisco shortly after moving into this house in 1858. And they lived in San Francisco until 1868 when they moved back to this very home here in Old Town San Diego. Thomas Whaley had a very hardworking entrepreneurial spirit. In fact, he owned a lot of hardware stores and general stores across the American West. He even traveled and sold um, items up in Alaska territory back in the 1800s. So he would go, he would go on the road for long periods of time, sometimes years, while his family stayed behind here in San Diego and lived their day-to-day -day lives. Another thing I want to note is some more dark history that happened, not just the hangings, but within the Whaley family while they lived in this house. One of their daughters, Violet, who was a very creative girl, she, she was big into music, big into painting. Um, she married young, I think around 20 years of age, and her, her husband, her newlywed husband, was kind of a reckless guy. And he ended up abandoning her and leaving her and splitting and leaving San Diego, which left her brokenhearted. So she sank into a deep depression and attempted suicide in fact, there used to be a cistern out here, like an old well. And Violet Whaley tried to jump into the well. In fact, she did jump into it. And her father, Thomas, I don't know if he heard the splash or maybe he saw it, but he actually rescued her and pulled her out, saved her life. And then unfortunately, just a month later, Violet took her father's pistol, went into the backyard where there used to be an outhouse, right here where this brick building now stands and she shot herself through the heart. Her father Thomas heard the gunfire. He came outside through the back door most likely and he found her bleeding out in the outhouse. He carried her into the parlor, which I'll show you when I get inside. And Violet bled to death, passed away right on the sofa in front of this very window in the parlor. So Violet Whaley, committed suicide in the backyard and died in this house, a real tragedy. So a lot of people say they hear and see the spirit of Violet Whaley still haunting this house. The Whaley's also had a son that died of scarlet fever when he was 17 months old. And I believe he passed away in one of the bedrooms upstairs. So some dark history here with the Whaley family that, that might be the reason some people believe this place is so haunted. Well, without further ado, let's go inside the Whaley House, one of the most haunted houses in North America. And maybe another woman will whisper at me, I don't know. I don't get that very often. So I'm actually standing on the very front porch here at the Whaley House, about ready to go inside. I'm getting excited here because back in 2012 when I came here, you just entered through the front door, but now you enter through the courthouse door. So the first room I will be stepping into is the courtroom, which is where I had my most significant paranormal experience to date. That's where the woman whispered at me, that, that disembodied voice. So heart's starting to beat a little bit. Let's see, I, I don't know. We'll see if something happens. If not, you get to learn about the history and see 
the beauty inside this old house. Right there is a historical plaque built by Thomas Whaley, 1856 to 1857. I didn't know this though, it's the oldest brick structure in Southern California. All right, entering the courtroom. And right there, that is the very corner that I heard the disembodied voice back in 2012. That corner right there is where the woman whispered at me. So these are the very courtroom benches that back in 2012 I, I heard like creak. Now you can see I'm putting my weight up and down the bench. It really doesn't make any noise. But back in 2012 when I had my paranormal experience, it sounded like people creaking or like these benches creaking and people getting out of them. And then that's when I heard the whisper right here in the corner, right there. I heard a woman whisper at me and she said something like, Sue, and it was right there in that corner. 
I'm going to reenact this real quick. So I was literally standing right here taking pictures with my iPhone back in 2012 and just snapping them just like this when I had that experience. So I will say this is so weird being back, back here in the Whaley House in the very room. I've had my most pronounced paranormal experience right in here. Right now I feel fine. I feel perfectly fine. I don't have any weird feelings, but it is just really cool being back here. This is really what, what started, not really necessarily started my fascination with ghosts and the paranormal, but this is, this is the one experience that I had where it really was like, wow, like that just happened and I can't explain it. it. This is the one where I really truly started believing. This is the one experience where I really truly started believing in ghosts and it happened right there and I'm back. Now one thing I will note, I remember back in 2012, I was looking at these old pictures of the Whaley House in San Diego. And this house was built in 1856 and 1857, and 1857 is when the family moved into this home. Well, I'm from Spirit Lake, Iowa, originally. It's, it's a resort area, Okaboji in Northwest Iowa. In 1857, there was a Indian massacre that happened. Um, and the Indian tribe was the Lakota Sioux Indians. There was a renegade band um, with the chief named Inca Baduda who, who murdered dozens of settlers across Spirit Lake, Iowa. That all happened in 1857. Well, I remember back in 2012 when I was here with my dad, I remember turning to him in this room and asking, you know, I wonder, 1857, do you think the Whaley's heard about the Spirit Lake Massacre? And because I heard the voice Sioux, and it was a Lakota Sioux Indian tribe that, that, that massacred these settlers, I don't know if that's a connection or not, but that is kind of strange, right? Sioux. So anyway. There's anybody here? I heard you before, and I'm back. Yeah. All right, well, this is the famous courtroom. We're gonna move on into the house. So I'm stepping into the general store. Now, Mr. Thomas Whaley ran a general store here in the house. He sold a lot of goods for early pioneers and settlers and townsfolk here in the American West. And people say that they can sometimes smell Thomas Whaley's tobacco. They, they can hear him in here in this room. Um, I have never had any experiences in this room. Again, my biggest paranormal experience ever was in the courtroom. But uh, this is the old general store here that's connected to the house. In fact, here on the wall, this is a picture of some of the Whaley children. Some pictures here of Frank Whaley, Thomas Whaley Jr. He's the one that died at a young age from scarlet fever. And here is another one of the sons, George Ringold Whaley. And here's a picture of Thomas Whaley himself, the quote, God speed me to the distant land toward which my future hopes are centered and grant a fair realization of my wishes. He was a true entrepreneur. All right, making my way into the dining room. This is kind of a cool little alcove. I love the eerie flickering of the lantern. Man, that is really kind of ghostly, isn't it? I think that's a picture of Anna Whaley. Thomas Whaley's wife, and uh, there's some shelving here as well. That's really cool. I don't know. It's kind of like just a mini little thoroughfare into the dining room. There's a picture of Anna Whaley. It's actually one of, I think that's the oldest daughter of the Whaley's, and here is a picture of Violet Whaley, the daughter that unfortunately took her own life here at the house. She passed away on August 19th, 1885. 
feeling a cool breeze right now. Look at the, oh, that's weird. The, uh, there it is again, the feathers are kind of moving. I don't know where that would be coming from, but that was kind of weird. All right, anyway, here's the dining room. I'm gonna go back in here. And uh, apparently there was a niece, a young girl named Marion Reynolds, who ate Kellogg's ant paste by mistake. She thought it was candy and it, she was poisoned to death, killed her. It's pretty depressing. It, actually, I never knew that Kellogg's, the cereal company made ant paste. Back here is the kitchen. Kellogg's Honey Bunches of Poison. I figured I'd film myself in a mirror because sometimes you never know what appears in mirrors and haunted locations. Sometimes people see faces. I don't know. Anna Whaley, are you in here? Thomas Whaley? Hello? That is the most haunted mirror in the house, they say. Really? really? Yes. This one right here? Yeah, it has haunted significance. Oh. There. Interesting. Wait, do people, do people see? Haunted. So, uh, one time I was in here and uh, we were trying to figure out a way to kind of rearrange the photos in here, make it more narratively, like, you know, inclined, yeah. right? Makes sense. And I was like, well, if we move the mirror there, my boss was like, no, 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 we can't, we can't move that mirror there. It has haunted significance that spot, so, I don't know, haunted mirror in a haunted place in the house. Yeah. I feel like every haunted place needs to have a haunted mirror. Yeah, I mean all of them are haunted, but that one in particular is very haunted. This one in particular. Yes. Interesting, here in the dining room, so there you have it. The most haunted mirror in the Whaley house. Walking into the main entryway here, look at this. The marble on the walls, this is original to the house. It's very elegant. What's kind of interesting, a lot of older homes that I've been to, usually the grand staircase is facing the front door. This is one of the only houses I've seen where the main stairwell is actually facing away from the front door. It's kind of unique. I don't know why that is, although there is a, another main entryway here, so maybe this was like one of the main doors they used back in the day. All right, I'm gonna head upstairs. Now, there have been paranormal experiences here, even while the Whaley's were living in this house. In fact, there's journal writings and diary writings from the family members back in the mid-1800s where they claim to have heard and seen paranormal things. And one of the stories that Thomas Whaley supposedly talks about is hearing heavy footsteps on this very staircase. Supposedly, he thought it was one of the men that were hanged here on this site. There was a man named Yankee Jim Robinson who was arrested for trying to steal a rowboat and was hanged here on the property. Now Yankee Jim was a, a big man for back in the day. He was six foot five. And when they hanged him here, his feet bounced off the ground and he actually strangled to death. Yeah, I think it's reports where it took up to 15 to 30 minutes for him to die. So he had a very violent death and there's claims that his spirit has been haunting this house for 150 years. In fact, Thomas Whaley claimed to have heard the heavy footsteps of Yankee Jim Robinson, even back when the Whaley's were living here. Here's Thomas and Anna Whaley's master bedroom. I don't know how much of this furniture is original to the Whaley family. I think a lot of it is just uh, furniture taken from that time period. But there could be some original furniture. I just, I just don't know. That's really cool. Some old journal writings there on the desk. This is the master bedroom of Mr. and Mrs. Whaley. Over here is one of the children's rooms. In fact, Thomas Whaley Jr., who passed away from scarlet fever, I guess died in this room at 17 months old. So this is one of the rooms many of the Whaley kids slept in. There's a creepy doll laying on the bed, just staring at me. Ooh, I am not 
a fan of dolls. Not a fan of dolls. They, they creep me out. This is amazing. This is an old photo of Old Town San Diego taken in 1898. There's like no structures here at all. This is the main street here in Old Town and right there, that's the Whaley House. Right there. Looking uh, at the backyard in 1898. So really, Old Town San Diego was very desolate. Even then, in the late 1890s. Looked like a farm field. You could see the Pacific Ocean right there too. What's cool is this is definitely no ordinary house. They even have a theater upstairs on the second floor. Look at this. There is an old theater on the second floor of this house. How cool is this? And they even have old tiny films showing here on the back. Of course, back in uh, the late 1800s when the Whaley's lived here, it would have been vaudeville, real actors and actresses performing here on the stage. But this is incredible. And I guess the stage opened up here in 1868. And what's interesting is there was a man named Thomas Tanner, who was actually an entertainer here at this venue. And he passed away shortly after performing here. In fact, he's buried here in Old Town San Diego at a cemetery just up the street. So some more unfortunate, I guess, unfortunate events here at the Whaley House. It's so cool to see this. I guess when this opened up, this theater, uh, 150 people came to watch here in this tiny little room. Could you imagine that? 150 people crowded in this room to watch a performance. That's something else. Look at this. It's a theater with a stage and everything. This is so cool. What's interesting too is the, the stage is like angled. It's like at an angle, which I've really never seen before. Maybe it's just old age here at the house, and the house settling. But anyway, this is so cool. There's an actual theater here on the second floor of the house. I wish my house had a theater, that'd be awesome. So when they were renovating the Whaley House, I think it was in the early 1990s, they actually found all of these old bottles and relics buried on the property. And they've got them here on display in this museum. Look at that, there's a Winchester shotgun cartridge. Look at that, lime cola. White magic bleach. 1929 to 1954, so they found all of these relics here on the, on the property. Look at that, a toy soldier. Bennington doorknobs, 1855 to 1920. Old plates. For some people, it's torture. For other people, this is the greatest thing they can do. The nice thing about this class is that they get to know.
This is an archaeological excavation at the historic residence. Some old keys and a bear. It kind of looks like the bear on the California flag. Another view looking down the main staircase. It's interesting how narrow the grand staircase is. Well, let's head back downstairs. Back downstairs, they have more items on display. This is a dress that Anna Whaley would have worn during that time period in the late 1800s. This isn't her actual dress. Her actual dress and attire is being kept somewhere safer and so it can be better preserved. But uh, this gives you an idea of what Mrs. Whaley would have worn uh, at the time she was living here around the late 1860s through the 1870s and late 19th century. And the same thing here, they've got um, a reenactment, I should say, of Thomas Whaley's top hat and vest. It's not his exact attire, but this is similar to what he would have worn when he was living here at the house. They have some slippers on display. And what's interesting here, one of the daughters, Lillian, this is her 32 caliber pistol. Now Lillian was not the daughter that, that killed herself, that was Violet. But Lillian apparently had a pistol as well, and she lived a long life. She lived a, she lived into well into her old age, and actually often returned to this house in the early 20th century. Here is the main parlor or living room, and it's roped off during the day tour. Uh, the night tour, we actually got to walk inside this room, and I want to point out that this archway here, people nickname this the Death Arch, is apparently this archway is on the exact spot that the gallows used to be where they hanged people before the house was built. So people say when they walk through that archway, they, they get shivers, they feel, feel cold spells, their necks feel tight. And right here, this sofa, it's not the exact one, but this is where Violet Whaley passed away. Her father, Thomas, heard the gunshot outside, found her bleeding out and carried her body here, right by this window, and this is where she died. They got a photo of Violet Whaley right there too, on the wall. Now Regis Philbin, famous TV star, who wants to be a millionaire? And he actually recently passed away a couple years ago as well. But when he was a young man, I think this was back in the 1960s, he claims to have seen the ghost of Anna Whaley here in this very living room. Regis Philbin was visiting the Whaley house one night and he claims to have had an encounter. He saw the apparition of Anna Whaley appear here in the living room and then disappear. So he, he, he talks about that throughout his life. You can find interviews online where Regis Philbin is talking about his ghostly experience here at the Whaley house. So even TV icon Regis Philbin had an encounter. Apparently, they used to hang criminals here on this property before the house was built, and this archway supposedly is built right where the gallows was. So this is crazy. So apparently, people feel things when they walk under this arch. This is wild. So there's a picture, I think, of Anna Whaley, the, the mother, Thomas Whaley's wife. And apparently she was a musician and played on this very organ that they have here. It's really weird how the lights in here flicker on and off. It's like a kind of a macabre theme to it. But anyway, walking under the gallows, the old gallows, the, the murder arch, mm -hmm. so they call it here. All right, we're heading back outside. And again, my, my camera, Stop working. This is the weirdest thing. I've never had this happen before. So anyway. That happens a lot. This so again, I don't feel anything eerie today. The funny thing about paranormal activity is I feel like it, it's kind of like a wave. You won't, you'll feel fine one second and then all of a sudden something happens. Maybe it's a strong emotion overcomes you. Maybe it's an eerie feeling like you're being watched. Maybe it's a sound, a smell, or even 
maybe you see something. But, um, you know, I've been to a lot of haunted places across the United States. Haven't seen a whole lot of things happen, but I've, I've seen enough that I am a true believer. And I did, again, have an apparition or a disembodied voice encounter here at the Whaley House back in 2012. So I am a firm believer that the Whaley House is definitely haunted. Even if I don't capture anything today, it's still fun walking throughout this house and you never know. Again, paranormal activity is weird. You never know when you're gonna catch that wave. I guess to uh, give you a California metaphor. And I was like, wow, that's like kind of odd. Oh wow, so you, you saw footprints in the general store, it's like child's footprints. Yeah, and then I took a picture of them. There was no other footprints around. I, I was like, and that was like the best angle of the light. It looks like a, like a bare footprint too. Yeah. It doesn't look like boots, it's like it's somebody's feet. Yeah, and I was like, that's so weird. Like, cause we don't let people in here with like no yeah. shoes or anything like that. So I was weird. like, that's super weird. And um, then other than that, I had, uh, I was on the paranormal tour and I did the Estes method on the theater stage. So I don't know if you're familiar with the Estes method, but it's like you blindfold yourself and you have noise canceling headphones on and that's connected to a spirit box. Okay, I've seen that online, yeah. yeah. And so you pretty much listen to whatever comes through. Other people are kind of asking questions, poking and prodding the ghost, see what kind of responses you get. Yeah. And so I was sitting there after about maybe five, 10 minutes, I wasn't hearing much. It was just gibberish and then the house was generally pretty warm at that time. It was in the high 70 degrees. Yeah. And so my hands got cold all the way down to both sides and I was like, that's a bit odd for how warm it is in here. And so I was like, maybe that's kind of a sign. Maybe I should open up. And so I did a little bit and then I heard my name come through the spirit box. Not, not my stage name, the actual. Your real name. name. Yeah, and I was like, Oh, whoa, okay. And then it said, look at me, look over here, look, look at me. And then nothing else after that. And I was like, that's so weird. And so I took it all off and I didn't know that they put a music box next to me while I was doing that method. Now it has a sensor on it. If you go past it, it plays this creepy nursery chime for a quick second. And if you stay in front, it'll keep playing it the whole time. So I was sitting there and then afterwards, after I took everything off, I looked at my phone because I was recording audio. And then after I heard myself repeating what I heard on the headphones, I could hear the music box playing the entire time, wow. indicating that somebody was behind me. Wow. And I was like, okay. And so I went up to everybody else and I was all like, hey, like, did you guys notice that the music box was playing? Because I caught it on my phone and everything. And then they kind of looked at me weird and they're like, the music box wasn't playing when you were up there, dude. And I was like, what? Really? Yeah. And so that really tripped me out. I was like, that's, that's wow. like crazy. Yeah, it's hard to explain. Yeah, because I couldn't explain it. I was like, well, it literally said my name, this, this, and this, and then that is going yeah. off like someone's behind me, like, I'm right here, man. Wow, like, that's amazing. Well, thanks for sharing. Winchester? Yes. Is that your stage name? Yes, it is. Uh, just like the uh, Winchester Mansion up in uh, yes, San Francisco area, right? Yes. Yeah, I still that's haven't been there. That's on my to-do list, so. Same with mine, to be honest. Yeah. I haven't gone there yet, but I like a lot of uh, things that kind of like involve the Winchester name, yeah. you know, and ironically enough, Whaley actually had his hands in a lot of different things, like uh, guns and other things like yeah. that. His One of his uh, relatives was a gunsmith, and so pretty much it kind of made sense, and we're going to be adding some more uh, things to the museum really soon. One of those is going to be some extra guns. Oh, cool. And so, yeah. Winchester is going to have a time to shine. Yes. Okay. All right, well, thanks for sharing, Winchester. Of course. It's great. Anytime. Right, thank, you. thank you. Here's the Whaley family tree. That's Anna and Thomas at the top, and their children. Francis also went by Frank. Thomas Whaley Jr., he's the, the son that died of scarlet fever at a young age. Anna Whaley, the, the daughter named after her mom, lived. I think into her 40s, George Whaley, Corinne Lillian, who went by Lillian most of her life. She lived well into old age. And then Violet Whaley, who had the tragic death here at the house. Some more history on the hanging of Yankee Jim Robinson, who was found guilty of stealing a rowboat and hanged here on the property. This is August 27th, 1852, so shortly before this house was built. And again, supposedly, supposedly the gallows were located right here where this archway is. 
That could very well be the exact spot that Yankee Jim Robinson was hanged. I just learned that Mrs. Whaley, Anna Whaley, Thomas's wife, passed away in this room. Of course, she lived a long life, 1832 to 1913, but I guess she passed away in this room here that her daughter Violet passed away right there where that couch is. And then the gallows, where several prisoners were tried and hanged, passed away right there where that archway is. So a lot of residual energy right here in this part of the house is what I'm being told. I don't feel anything right now, but that's wild. A lot of death right here. Thank you very much, guys. Take care. Yeah. Well, that has been the Whaley House here in San Diego, California. Again, one of the most haunted houses in North America, so they say. But again, yes, I didn't really have any weird feelings throughout this day tour so far. And uh, I'll have to go through my audio to see if maybe I pick something up. But I will say, back in 2012, here in the courtroom, that is where I had my most profound paranormal experience here at the Whaley House, so I, I am a true believer. I do think that this place is incredibly haunted, but like I said earlier, paranormal activity is weird. It's, it's weird, it comes at you like a wave. One minute, everything's fine. The next minute, you might feel something, you might hear something, you might see something. You just never know any given day, but I do love coming here. It, it's amazing being back here in San Diego, and I will say, even if you don't believe in ghosts, the history here is absolutely incredible. This is a staple here in Southern California. I have one more place I want to show you. This isn't the end. I was talking about the gallows that used to be here on the property and the ghost and the death of Yankee Jim Robinson. Well, there's a little more to his story. So let me show you the next location. But first, I want to walk around the back side of the Whaley House just to see if anything happens, who knows? an old barrel and this is the windows and this is the back door that leads into the house to that main stairwell and here is the kitchen look inside and see some tourists walking around straight ahead of me this was the location of the cistern that Violet Whaley jumped in while she was trying to take her own life. I think it was located like right here, according to some of the old plans that I have in a book that I purchased. It was located somewhere here on this side of the house. It was like right, right around here is where the old cistern or well used to be. And where this brick building is right in front of me, this was the old outhouse here in the back of the Whaley House. This is the location of the outhouse that Violet Whaley committed suicide. She shot herself through the heart right here. And then of course her father heard the, heard the sound of the gun and carried her into the parlor room where she died. But the location of that outhouse was right here where this brick building stands now. Another view of where that outhouse used to be and here is the back of the Whaley House. And here's the back of the courthouse that's attached to the main Whaley House. In fact, this is one of the doors that leads into the courtroom right here. There's an old wagon sitting here as well. A historic horse buggy. Check this out. They got an old prison cell back here as well, too. Now, this, this isn't the original. I don't think the prison actually sat here. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think there was actually a prison cell here on the property. But yes, this is 
this is the very property where they actually hanged and executed prisoners and men that were condemned. Help me! I didn't do it, Thomas Whaley! Let me out! Don't hang me! I don't want to be hanged here on the Whaley House property. I don't want to be here for eternity haunting the Whaley House grounds. That wouldn't be good. I wouldn't want to be here. Even though San Diego is a nice town. There's a cool gift shop next door to the Whaley House as well. They've got lots of magnets, t-shirts, hats that you can buy, proving to the world that you've been to the most haunted house in the United States. Wow, that was a hummingbird. That was awesome. Anything? Nothing today. Yeah, it's pretty, it was pretty busy over there from what I hear. Just about a five minute walk up the street from the Whaley House is the historic El Campo Santo Cemetery. It's an old Western cemetery. It's been around since the 1840s. One grave I want to pay respects to, or at least show you because it's got a big connection with the Whaley House is this grave right here. This is the grave of James W. Robinson, also known as Yankee Jim. This was the very man that was hanged on the Whaley House property. And he's buried just up the street. So this was a, a real person, not a thing of urban legends. James W. Robinson, Yankee Jim, was a real person, tried for stealing a rowboat and was hanged at the gallows where the Whaley House now stands. It's his spirit that Thomas Whaley and other family members claim to have heard walking heavily up and down the staircase at night. And he's buried right here, just down the street. It's wild seeing this old Western cemetery with burials dating back to the 1840s, just sitting here in the middle of Old Town San Diego. The town has grown around it. You can see restaurants across the street, people enjoying margaritas outside. There's actually a restaurant right next door. And uh, they're dining amongst the tombstones, literally. Old pioneers laid to rest in what is now an entertainment district and historical park. It's just, it's kind of strange. This is a colorful grave here. Jose Manuel Machado, born in 1781. Wow. It's funny when you think of American history, the rise of civilizations, you think of a lot of the early settlements to be on the East Coast, you know, New England, where the British came across the ocean. But actually, California has some of the oldest settlements in the United States. A lot of the Spanish conquistadors, the early missionaries, settled around here in San Diego. So it's really amazing to see some of these, these dates on these tombstones dating all the way back to people being born in the mid to late 1700s, laid to rest here in San Diego, California. People seem to forget that there is a lot of history, not just on the East Coast, but also here on the Western Coast of the USA. Here is another famous grave with a connection to the Whaley House. If you remember, this is Thomas Tanner. He was the man that ran the acting troupe that performed on the second floor at the Whaley House in the theater that they have there. And unfortunately, it says here that Tanner died only 17 days after his troop opened. 
So literally 17 days after he began performing at the Whaley House, he passed away at the age of 55. Doesn't say how he died. I think I remember reading that it was from an illness. But yeah, another strange and kind of depressing Whaley House connection here at the cemetery, Thomas Tanner. Well, there you have it. Whether you believe in the paranormal or not, a fascinating history into Old Town San Diego. Again, the Whaley House to me is one of the most haunted places in the United States. Didn't see anything today, but maybe I'll cover, or maybe I will uncover something when I go through my audio. Hard to say, but if I do, I will share it with you here. But I do love coming back to Old Town, love touring the Whaley House. The people that run that do an excellent job with their presentations on both the ghost stories, maybe some urban legends, and also the history though, most importantly the history. They do a great job presenting that. So I want to say thanks for watching today. This has been an incredible time as I walk through this old decrepit cemetery here in San Diego. I've got a lot more haunted places I'm planning to film and, and other roadside attractions as well. So thanks for joining me. This is Eric with the Get Me Out of Here vlog and it's time for me to get out of here. is really eerie, especially when you know that you're the only person here, so I do recommend keep eyes and ears open as you walk through. Now, there were five other deaths that happened inside the home, so I do recommend keep eyes and ears open as you walk through. Now, there were five other deaths that happened inside the home, so I do recommend keep eyes and ears open as you walk through. Now, there were five other deaths.